What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back to episode 36. Starting off from the same area in the ancestral woods. Um, this time we are gonna head right on over here. So just past the hollow horn grounds, it's time to make our way to the Seofra Aqueduct. You can just run past this stuff. We've killed it before, so no real reason to concern yourself with it. And the biggest thing you want to look out for is the jellyfish. When you see the jellyfish, you are along the correct path. You can fight them if you want, uh, but to me, they're more of just like an indicator. And over here, we have an old fang. And if you look, we can drop on down. It's one of the things I love so much about this game. There's like so many just like tucked away areas that are just waiting to be discovered. I actually, I didn't discover this area till very, very late. Uh, my own first playthrough. I didn't even realize it was here. So I'm just having a parry shield. We have some Crucible Knights on deck. You have become a parry god by this point. They should be no problem. Okay, hop down to this. And then go on over and hop down to here. Alright, so first up. Come on, ugly. Let's go. I'm waiting on you. There it is. Really should upgrade my miser cord for these fights. Oh no. I keep forgetting to do my jump. So this is probably more representative of what most people are going through, just spamming parries on these guys. So it goes to show that even when you're sloppy as shit, you can still do it. First Crucible Knight dead, you get the Horn Shield. Um, honestly, it's it's decent, but it's not as good as you would hope. As you can see, it's only a 60 guard boost compared to the 67 we get on the Manor. Um, so, I mean, it's not bad. It has Shield Bash, and you poke him with that big horn. I don't think it does like bonus damage or anything, but it's a thing. Don't forget to grab them Golden Centipedes. Got the Missionary's Cookbook. Uh, and then we head on back. So there is a, another Crucible Knight, this one being the Spear Variant, which this should be the first time you're running into one of those. But before we tackle him, there are, you can see him right up there, there's a couple of lesser dudes that we're going to fight first, just to get them out of the way so they don't interrupt the fight. Because the last thing you want to be doing is focusing on parries and dodging against a Crucible Knight, and some other dudes decide that it's their turn to join the battle. Once they are out of the way, now we are ready for our fight with the Crucible. I'd suggest using your flask here. There's nothing else in this area until the boss that you need to concern yourself with. I want to see if I can get a backstab on you. I don't know if I can. So the spear ones are a little bit trickier to parry, I feel. I'm just really bad at parrying spears, to be honest, but... The, the best trick here, I think, is to look for the arm movement. You can see the arms come, and that's a good indicator that it's time. Uh 
Uh, if he does his thing, this is more of a roll away than a roll through like the other one. Oh, I jumped. Let me do this horn stomp. I'll get you a nice cool somber six. Pick up another somber five. Yeah, by the time we're done these underground areas, you, you're gonna have, um, you know, aside from like the, the early plus 10 rush we did, you'll have another weapon that you can get fully upgraded almost. It won't be a plus 10, but it'll be a plus nine, which is plenty strong. You'll have a lot of upgrade mats. Bop that thing. Grab the golden centipede that gave us order healing. Go over here and grab this. And then, uh, let me see. Order healing on beetle, big rune, and then a second rune outside on the ledge. It's right here. Okay. Uh, let me look at the notes. Do, 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 return and take the door to the left before the waterfall, then the waterfall for loot and white walkers, then the right path. Okay. So we already cleared out these guys. I'm going to head up this way. And we're going to grab this. There's a bunch of those enemies right there, so just don't worry about them just yet. Instead, come in here. Have we found a somber seven naturally yet? No. Okay. Once we find that, I'm gonna. I'm waiting for that moment before I decide to pull my bloodhound spang out. Like I said, a lot of these guys in the waterfall. Someone die? Yes, he did. Okay. I go under the waterfall to grab smithing stone four. No centipedes. Check. I think we grabbed everything here, so I'm going to take another look. Yes, we did. I'm going to head on through and over here. Nothing uh, This is D's brother. So go ahead and talk to him. Hand over the twin set. We get inner order. All right, and that's good for now. And then up top, we have the gargoyles. Now, this fight can be a little challenging right now. You don't have to do it this second. Uh, the area attached to here is where we wrap up Thea's quest, and we can come back and do it almost any time. Um, the gargoyles, it, it's honestly going to be like a little bit of a DPS race here because there's two gargoyles. We have one that spawns in and then a second one that spawns in. Uh, they can do a lot of damage from poison, so you might want to throw on your neutralizing boluses. But like the cloud that generates the poison is actually quite deadly. So I think that's the, the bigger threat here. Uh, there we go. Um, to be honest, this fight's just going to be, you know, can you kill the gargoyles before they can kill you? So... I think we should be fine. I'm gonna let this one come on over to us just to buy us some time before the second one summons. There's that poison mist and you can see just how much damage that's capable of doing. Second one is up, so we're gonna try and finish bursting this one down. There we go. And that's exactly what we wanted. So we're gonna cure the poison. And now it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. Well, technically a two-on-one, because I have Mimic. Yeah, I think this fight's... Pretty easy work if you can get the first guard roll down in time. Ooh. I 
I may have spoke too soon. about sword dances you don't have to do the whole art I can just do the quick double tap As you can see, a little challenging, um, but you know, not not uh, terribly difficult. Of course, we have the Gargoyle's Greatsword and Twin Blade. Both of these are pretty decent weapons. Uh, this one has Vacuum Slice on it. This one just has Spitting Slash on it. Uh, but the Vacuum Slice, pretty nice, pretty nice ability all around. This is going to come out and it's going to toss out a slice. Um, not quite as good as like Ruin's Greatsword or Blasphemous Blade. A little bit of a lesser version of those, but not bad at all. So with them down, we are going to do 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 hit this grace, and then we're gonna grab deep root depths real fast. We're not gonna do anything there. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll grab it and we'll get y'all the map. That sounds like a good plan, I think. So, and then we'll start the path to Noxtella this episode as well. I personally think it's better to do this area after. Um, the final boss for this area is worth more runes than the boss for the other area we're going to do. And that's usually how I'm, I'm planning out this progression. I'm, I'm looking at, you know, how many runes do you get for the main boss of an area? And that's how I'm deciding where we should go. So, like, right now... And, and, and by the way, with Radon done, uh, if y'all want to just go up here and start exploring the capital or exploring the volcano region, go for it. I wouldn't suggest killing the final boss of the volcano region yet, right card? Because there's a bunch of side quests you won't be able to complete if he's dead. Um, but yeah, you can, I mean, you can explore, just don't, don't go killing any, any, like, big, big bosses. Uh, so obviously we have no map up here. Okay, just getting rid of these markers. Uh, so this is very much going to be just kind of like a visual follow. But you can see an Erd Tree guy off that way. Ignore him. And I'm just going to run and grab the map for this area, and that'll make things easier for us when we come back here. We're going to climb up on this route, and we're just going to follow this along. We're going to jump over to this route. There's a bunch of ants. We can ignore them. Stay along the routes. Give us a nice wide berth. On over this way. And you can see we're just kind of like gradually turning northwest. And we're just running through. We're not worried about anything that's here. We're going to grab this grace. So we'll have access. That way we'll have a little, little bit of fast travel potential when we come back here. And we're just going to run along the waterfall here. Let's grab this one loot that's along the way. Watch out for that thing. And then there we go. The map for the deep root depths. That guy should drop aggro. Oh no, there's a... Hang on. We might need to kill this thing real fast. So, now we have this area mapped out, which will make things a lot easier when we return to it. Uh, instead, though, head back on over to Ronnie's Rise, and we are going to get started on Noxtella. Knocking out Noxtella is great right now, because it's going to give us access to a ton of things. More upgrade mats, it'll get us access to that final part in Liurnia, uh, one of the best spells in the game, Dark Moon Greatsword, all kinds of really good stuff. But just head northeast towards that other tower. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, do, 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 did I get y'all the... Hang on. 
before we go and do that, there's so there's two skills we can get up here. I know we got the one, and I think we got the other one in a previous episode, but I need to run by and check. So I get towards the manor. If I hear a shiny, that means we didn't get it. Now, I'm not hearing the shiny, but yeah, there's another shiny beetle around here. I think we got it in a previous episode. To be honest, everything just kind of blends together between like the the new game plus playthroughs I'm doing and the walkthrough prep and the walkthrough, especially episodes like this, because this is still like content that I was re-recording. So it's like trying to remember what I covered in the re-recording and what I didn't. And usually as soon as I'm done the streams with the prep work, I jump right in and record it while I have. I mean, obviously I have the notes, but everything's also just fresh, like short term memory. You remember right where everything is at. Uh, jump over here. Peak Mage Fashion. Snow Witch Hat also boosts the damage of any snow sorceries, so pretty nice hat. Uh, but head on top, and uh, we can now take this. Now, previously, this area is blocked off. After completing that first portion of Ronnie's quest, this opens. Which is why we can now go here. Okay, welcome to Ainsel River, Maine. So, just like the other one gave us the second portion of the Siofra River, this is going to give us the second portion of the Ansel River. Uh, so there's nothing over there. There's just a coffin. You can't climb in that one. Of course, similar to the rest of these areas, there's a dewkist all over the place for you to grab. Uh, but more importantly, right here is a doll. It's a miniature Ronnie. How nice. You know, you can put your little waifu doll and up on a shelf with all your other little anime figurines, like the filthy weeb degenerate you are. For those that don't know, I say this in jest. I consume a disgusting amount of anime, probably more so than any normal person should. I'm a complete degenerate weeb myself. Uh, but anyway, here, talk to Miniature Ronnie. Let's do it a couple times. A dogged fellow, aren't we? Or is it merely thy habit to talk to dolls? Fine. Fine. I hadn't expected any soul to recognize me in this guise. But now the cat is out the bag. I cannot have a form for me. Eliminate that the name of Rani the Witch is already sullied by thee. I perform for Eliminate the name of Rani. I will not brook. I like how she's kind of like angsty. She's very angry now. She's like, you will do what I tell you. But anyway, after that, we're just going to head along this path here. And you can see we got a big boy. So there's a bunch of these dudes. Let me put on my lantern. Make things a little bit easier to see. Um, you may remember these from before. They're just as annoying and just as resistant. And just as just irritating to deal with. For the most part, I would suggest just straight ignoring these things. You don't, I mean, you're getting 500 uh, runes a pop on them now. But they're still just pain in the ass, so... Instead, run this way, and we're going to use these structures here at the palace ruins to protect us while we run through. Alright, when the rocks stop, run again. Grab the golden rune, and keep going. Go, 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 go! And we made it. Grab the smithing stone four. Grab the golden runes seven. And now there's a couple of these guys that we are going to want to kill. Just because if we don't kill them... They're going to get involved in our fight with the other guy, so. You can see they're not, like, particularly deadly, but if you give them the chance, they will get on top of you. So just, you know, take your time. Uh, those ones can throw magic things at you. Or rocks or something. Even post nerf Horfrost Stomp is fantastic here. This gives you some nice AoE against all of this crap. I think they're actually resistant to magic, which would explain it because I am working with a cold halberd, which has magic scaling. So after he is done being all uppity, go on over here. Six and a seven. And now we're just going to beat on this thing.
Don't let it pincer you, obviously. Stop it. Alright. Big ugly down. Let's see. Smithing four and seven. Use the structures for blocking. Big boy down. Snake along the southeast wall, grabbing loot. Um, let's see. Yeah, we don't want to go that way yet. So instead, we're going to... Oh, we're going to go this way slightly. Just to grab this. That's where we actually, like, proceed. But we're just going to do a quick loop here. Just grabbing everything we see. I'm just going to ignore the dudes, to be honest. They're, it's not worth it. And you will notice that getting through this stuff, you are going to come out of here with a ton of runes. By the time we're done with these areas, we'll probably be in the range of uh, 90, 95, I think. What are we at now? Yeah, probably probably close to 90. We're getting up there. That. That. And butterflies. Uh, this plant doesn't drop anything when it's killed, so I would suggest just run and just snatch and grab. Get the stonework key and then be on your way. Just not worth fighting. Gotta lure these guys away from that loot. There we go. Now that they're not on top of it, we can grab the claimant ashes. Which these dudes are claimants. They're it's alright. A lot of the summons are just kinda like, oh neat. They're not actually good. Okay, we are looking good. So, that is everything. Just a loop over here. Nope, and we are set. So yeah, now we just follow the water on down. Get some of the formic rock real fast. Some more formic rock. You can see we have some ants coming up. Our frostbite will work just dandy here. Ants don't like ice. So two more ants. Um, let's see. Human key by plant. Claim and ashes. Head past the palace for ants. Kill them and take the left path first. Watch out for that big one in the back. It's the only one that's really a threat right now. Alright. Now this one with the shield for his head, he can actually be pretty deadly if you're not careful. What you're going to want to do is just get behind him though. So just roll in. And then you can just go to town and take him out. But yeah, trying to fight that thing from the front... That head will bonk, it will hurt, you will not have a good time. So get behind it and then do your damage. Um, I don't think it's just yet, but coming up we're going to want to put on our Beast Repellent Torch. And it's just kind of nice to have a torch in these areas in general, because even with the lantern they're so dark. Kill that guy. go. Pick up all the formic rock around here. And you may recognize this area. This is where we killed that first centipede monster thing. We're going to get that loot in a second. For now, just take this around. If you hadn't killed that thing, it's still going to be here screaming and shooting rocks at you and whatnot. So just go and drop down. And mages. Say hello to your new weapon, the Wing of Estelle. Now, honestly, I, li I think this is like the best PvE mage weapon in the game. I like it more than Moonveil. Um, I mean, Moonveil's good. Don't get me wrong. It's fantastic. Moonveil can carry you through the entire game. But it's just kind of boring, you know? It's just like, oh, Katana. Katana with laser beam. Wow, so cool. Um, I don't even have the stats to... I don't know what I can get the stats, though. Hold up. I'm going to show you all this thing. This thing is just super, super good. So, let me get to an area where I'm not on the edge of a cliff. So, first off, Curve Sword moveset. 
which is of course really good. Nice and fast. On top of that, we have a solid split with an emphasis on magic here. The heavy attacks, they're ranged. They're not super far, but they are ranged. And they don't cost FP. So, that's good. Uh, the weapon art? That thing does insane damage. You drop that right on top of a boss when it finishes its attack and it's getting ready to like try and attack you or counter or whatever. It's just gonna be like bah, 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 bah. its health bar just explodes. So I really like it. I'd recommend it, especially if you're tired of Moonbill and you want to mix it up. Um, that was my main, that was my main hand weapon on my mage build. 100% stand behind it. Money back guarantee. So head on over this way. We're gonna get this. Do, 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 do. Ghost wort, and then from here. Go on down, and here we are, Noxtella Eternal City. Am I fat rolling? Oh, it's from you. That's oh, fine. I don't need you on for this. So this is where we're gonna wrap up. Um, quite a lot to do in Noxtella. We also get another one of the legendary talismans that we need to get our platinum. Um, some seeds and some other loose stuff and then this eventually takes us to the lake of rot so we're gonna wrap things up here we got noxtella coming up in the next part and i will catch you all then